The question in the November 19, 2009 edition of the Ask Tim Gray e-newsletter related to the visible difference between JPEG images saved at various quality settings. The person posing the question suggested that while they could see a difference between a very low setting for JPEG quality and a very high setting, at most settings in between there wasn't a discernible difference. The truth of the matter is that the differences are quite subtle. In this video I'll demonstrate the relatively minor differences between each quality setting for JPEG images, but also show you that there is indeed a difference between each and every quality setting available when saving JPEG images in Photoshop. What I've done is started with an original image, but then saved multiple versions of that image at a variety of different JPEG quality settings. I then brought all of the images together as individual layers in a single Photoshop document. As you can see here, I have the original image as an individual layer and then additional layers for JPEG quality settings of 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, and 0. I'm going to turn on the visibility for the layer that was saved with a JPEG quality of 0 and then, while still looking at the original image, I'll zoom in on a portion of that image so you can better see some of the detail. Keep in mind that the quality of streaming video is not going to show you all of the full detail available in this image, but it will allow you to see the relative differences between the original image and, in this case, our JPEG saved with a quality setting of zero. Scrolling back up to our original image, I'm going to toggle the visibility of that image layer off and on so that you can see, in this case, the original and now the JPEG with a quality level of zero. The difference is rather significant, so there's no question that one is different from the other and that we're losing a considerable amount of detail when saving with a JPEG quality setting of zero. Of course, seeing this difference is a little bit subjective, especially because it varies depending on the particular image we're reviewing, the resolution of that image, and other factors. Instead of trying to compare them visually, I'm going to use the Difference Blend Mode in Photoshop so that we can see with a bit more detail exactly what we're dealing with. This is accomplished by using two layers and comparing them against each other. For example, here I have a layer that compares the original image with the JPEG Quality 12 image. When I turn this layer on, the image appears to go entirely black. In the case of the Difference Blend Mode, black means that there's no difference between the pixel values on two individual layers. That would seem to indicate that the original image and the image saved as a JPEG with a quality setting of 12 are identical. In actual fact, there are differences, they're just so subtle that we can't see them. Instead of seeing bright colors, we're seeing very, very dark colors that are so dark, in fact, that they blend in with the black surroundings. In order to help enhance the visibility of the actual differences, I'm going to turn on a very exaggerated curves adjustment layer. Now, at this point, you might still not be able to see very well in the video that there are some colored pixels starting to show up, indicating the difference between the original image and the image saved at a JPEG quality setting of 12. Now the fact that I'm using an exaggerated adjustment and that the differences between pixel values are still very, very subtle indicates that in fact the JPEG file saved with a quality setting of 12 is preserving most of the detail in the image. To give you a better sense of just how exaggerated that adjustment layer is, I'm going to turn off my difference layer and show you the original image with that curves adjustment applied. As you can see, the image is extremely blown out. This is the degree of adjustment I had to apply in order to be able to see any difference at all on my JPEG quality level of 12. Now I'm going to turn on the other layers that represent the various JPEG quality settings so that you can see the difference as we go down in quality. Because we're using the difference blend mode to evaluate the results, we would expect to see more and more pixels of brighter and brighter colors as we reduce the quality setting for the JPEG images. Sure enough, when I turn on the layer that relates to the JPEG quality level of 10, you can see that more pixels appear. And with 8, we see even more, and 6, and 4, and 2, and 0. 
And as you can see, with each step down the line, we got more and more pixels. In other words, more and more degradation of information within the image, more loss of detail. Do keep in mind that this is still an exaggerated view of the difference. Even at a JPEG quality level of zero, if I turn off my adjustment layer, you'll see that the difference is not outrageous. We're still producing a reasonably good result compared to the original information. Not good enough to produce a large print, but good enough to share via email or even the web if we're using a small enough file size. Ultimately, you'll need to make a decision about the quality setting for JPEG images based on your specific needs. When quality is your paramount concern, but you'd still like to use the JPEG file format in order to reduce the file size, the maximum quality setting of 12 is the best choice. When you want to balance quality and file size, you can reduce the quality setting to achieve the desired file size benefit. In most cases, I won't use a quality setting lower than 8, but it is possible to get acceptable results at even lower settings. The key is to understand your needs and how the decision you make will affect the overall quality of your images.